my tour has come to an end and you know what happens at the end yes this is that vlog <laughs> everything you need to know before you plan your trip to kyrgyzstan Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Just Go with Amreen. I must warn you that this video is going to be super long because we have 15 points to cover. Everything that you need to know, everything that you need to keep in mind before you come to Kyrgyzstan. Without further ado, let's dive right into it. Take notes. Point number one, the weather and when is the best time to come basically leads into that. I don't know if you can tell but it is snowing right now and I'm not wearing a jacket. It feels amazing. <laughs> Kyrgyzstan is a mountainous region, mountainous country actually, and the weather is very unpredictable to say the least. It is constantly changing. The best time to visit Kyrgyzstan, I would say, is from April till like June, and then starting again from September up until like November. It might be raining in November, so beware of that. July and August is something I don't recommend. It might be very hot and very crowded and of course pricey as well more on the price later but this this is my recommendation december is also a good month to come if you want to experience the snow but you won't be able to see much or do much this is the first time i'm actually saying that because i feel snow is more beautiful than green but i think kyrgyzstan's beauty lies in its greenery visa yes so this is interesting my audience you guys are mainly from uae and india so let me just talk to you directly and the rest of you guys can check the link in the description box to see if you're eligible for a free visa on arrival no visa on arrival application in advance and etc etc so uae residents do not require a visa to be applied prior you can get visa on arrival however it is not free it is costing $50. You need to have three months, minimum three months of residency, UAE residency, and of course, six plus months of passport validity to avail this. Please carry your Emirates ID to get the visa at the airport, which will cost you $50. Indians, my friends, you need to apply for an e-visa. Very straightforward, very quick, but you need an additional document called the letter of invitation. Now, this is not rocket science. It doesn't come from the government or anything. You just need a licensed tour operator or you can contact me. I can help you with this. It will cost you an additional 50 to $75 apart from the $50 that you need to pay for the visa. So this is an additional cost for you to get a letter of invitation. It's very quick. You get it in like 24 hours, not a big deal. So you can also come to Kyrgyzstan with zero visa hassle. Just FYI, I am hosting a trip, a group trip exclusively for women getting to all the remote places that we visited, staying in all the amazing glamping options that I stayed in during my trip. We are doing this in April during the Eid break. April 6 to 11 is my group trip exclusively for women. So drop me a comment in the comment section below. Let's talk. Very important point to make for UAE residents who are eligible for visa on arrival as soon as you land you have to go for the visa it's right there there is a form that you need to fill out put it in your passport with your emirates id and hand it over to the counter they don't take cash they only take credit card there is sometimes only one person depending on what time you've landed there's sometimes only one person attending to like 30 40 uae residents trying to give them visa this is going to take you time and you cannot get around it you cannot get out of it the only other way is to actually get an e-visa but i think for that you need that letter of invitation i did not do the e-visa if you done the e-visa without a letter of invitation please let me know because i don't know about it and i didn't do it so i went there physically and got it done and it took me an hour if you have any other ways of getting this visa of kyrgyzstan quicker please let me know but this is what happened with us language is still a barrier very big problem bishkek there are lots of people that you will still find who speak english if you stay in a international chain sort of hotel like hyatt or novotel of course people speak english but otherwise it's a challenge. Youngsters speak English in Bishkek, but once you step out of Bishkek and you start driving outside or going outside and living elsewhere, expect not anybody to know one word of English. Point number four, 
food. Sorry, my vegetarian friends. As always, this is a very meaty, meaty country. Everything is halal. They don't have pork. I have not seen pork anywhere. In Kazakhstan, I still saw sections where there were pork, but Kyrgyzstan is an officially Muslim country, so everything is halal, no pork whatsoever. They have a lot of chicken, they have a lot of lamb, they have beef, they have horse. They don't have many veg options. There are a few veg options, but it's not a lot. If you're very particular about eating veg food, there are a few Indian restaurants in Bishkek because there are like 10,000 plus Indian students studying in Bishkek. So they have quite a few Indian restaurant options here. So you can go and have your veg food there. But once you step out of Bishkek, do not expect to find any Indian cuisine anywhere and very restrictive wedge options. Transportation, I didn't use any public transportation. What I saw, uh, they do have cabs of course and they also have something called a trolley bus but again because of language barrier I wouldn't even dare to get into one of those. I mean we'll be lost in translation. I don't know where I will land up. There is an app called Yandex. Go download that. It's like the Uber. Uh, you can feed your MasterCard, Visa, whatever details in it and use that to call for a cab to go from point A to point B in Bishkek. Outside Bishkek, I don't think it even works. I didn't use it. If you are getting a, a cab from ta uh, from the airport, the airport taxi costs about ten dollars to get from the airport, Manas International Airport, to the city center of Bishkek. Ten dollars. If you go through Yandex Go app, it will also cost you similar. Do not try to get a cab like hello take me somewhere don't try to do that because they will blurt any amount and you will not even know whether it's the right amount or not point number six most importantly Kyrgyzstan is a road tripping country don't know if that's the right word but basically expect yourself to be sitting in the car a lot everything is far if you're going into the mountains away from Bishkek expect yourself to be sitting in the car for a minimum of five hours it's like the closest place is the Shaska Canyon which is the fairy tale canyon is five hours away from Bishkek I'm just trying to tell you that and on average every single day expect yourself to be sitting in the car uh, with breaks of course with sightseeing five hours just so you keep that in mind if you're someone who suffers from motion sickness who some someone who doesn't like to be sitting in the car for so long then I don't recommend moving outside Bishkek so far away and stuff like that then base yourself in Bishkek that's your best bet and then you won't be able to see a lot because there's only like a very limited amount of stuff that you can see that's close to Bishkek. Do not try to self-drive in this country. Uh, the mountain parts of this country lose range. Even if you have a local SIM card, which I will talk about in a, in a little bit. Even if you have a local SIM card, there is no network. Uh, Google Maps will obviously stop working. And also the fact that Google Maps will only take you to a certain point. There are places, for example, if you're going to a valley, there are places to go, viewpoints and things like that. You will not know that. Only an experienced guide or an experienced English-speaking driver will be able to take you to those points. During snow, everything pretty much looks the same. <laughs> so we had no idea how the driver was driving from point A to point B when everything was just white. I don't recommend doing a self-drive here at all, not even in uh, summer months because the network is still an issue irrespective. Okay, that brings me to my next point which is get a English speaking driver or English speaking guide, whatever, basically someone who can drive you around to all these places. We went to very remote places. We went seven hours, eight hours, ten hours away from Bishkek to be honest and we couldn't have done that if we didn't have an English speaking guide. Also, uh, there's a place called Alton Arashan where we went where you have to actually switch your cars. You leave your car behind and you have to switch your car into a Soviet sort of a looking car and the driver obviously doesn't speak one word of English. And how are you going to do that if you're on your own? You won't be able to do that. You will not be able to go to Alton Arashan if you don't have someone who speaks the language. So. My recommendation is to get an English speaking driver, English speaking guide who can drive you around to all these remote places if you're planning to go there. Be prepared, pack everything, <laughs> especially if you are planning to come here in the shoulder months uh, like April or October, which is spring and autumn, you will not know what the hell the weather is because it's going to be cold and it's going to be warm and it could rain and it could snow or not snow but you could find snow so you have to pack for rain snow summer <laughs> and winter all in one trip i wouldn't recommend carrying such a heavy jacket because it won't be minus 20 but definitely carry a jacket 
and uh, carry some woolen stuff, uh, but also carry some light t-shirts or some shirts which like have full sleeves so that if you're feeling cold or whatever during the day also you still have yourself covered. Uh, thermal inner wear is also optional. It depends on how much you freeze. I freeze a lot so I carry them irrespective and they're so light to carry to be honest. If you're coming here in spring and autumn you will have to carry probably two pairs of shoes. One is like the hiking waterproof um, shoes if you encounter snow and stuff, rain and stuff but otherwise for the day, for the walks and stuff, Skechers will do in the city. Get a local SIM card. I couldn't even step out of the airport without having a local SIM card because I took, um, I took a cab from the Yandex Go app and I couldn't have done that if I didn't have data. I have roaming data on my package, um, Dubai uh, number, but it didn't work in, in Kyrgyzstan. It, it works everywhere else. It works in Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan and all the other places that I visit. But strangely, it did not work here. We had to land and quickly get a SIM card, uh, which costed us $14. We picked up the highest, the most expensive one because apparently it was fastest. Uh, unlimited data for like a month. In terms of money exchanges, you'll find them everywhere in Bishkek. Uh, just carry about $200 per person per week sort of a thing but if you've already paid for your tours which by the way probably include like half board or full board like all your meals or uh, breakfast and dinner or breakfast and lunch or whatever then you will not require that much cash we just exchanged $100 per person we've worked with that cash for the entire like 10 days our lunches during the tour were grab and go so we didn't really spend on lunch our dinners and breakfasts were covered. If you want to know how much a meal costs on an average, depending on what you're eating, if you're drinking alcohol, it's different of course, but on an average, it's like a thousand Kyrgyz som per person. This is very average, it could be more. Fitness, I mean, you're wondering, what does that have to do with Kyrgyzstan? Everything. This place, like I've already mentioned like a million times on this vlog, it is a mountainous place, okay? So even if you're going to like a lake or a waterfall or a canyon or whatever you will be doing a lot of walking they're not necessarily steep hikes or such but they are uphill downhill so there is a lot of walking involved uh, climbing involved there could be stairs there could be a trail stuff like that nothing like super dangerous or scary or steep or anything but just understand you need to have a moderate level of fitness if you want to do those things. Safety, I faced no issues safety wise whatsoever. Central Asia in general, I have found very safe to be around. I was alone walking around at 1 a.m. in Bishkek and I felt pretty safe to be honest. So don't worry about that. Do not expect Kyrgyzstan to be as cheap as Kazakhstan or even Uzbekistan. The main problem of why Kyrgyzstan beats the other two in terms of money why it is more expensive is because of the fuel. Just the fuel itself costs twice of what it costs in Kazakhstan. And due to that, your tours, your transports, everything goes through the roof. Well, of course, I'm not even close to comparing this to like Dubai or Europe or anything. Of course, compared to that, it's cheap. When I'm comparing this, I'm comparing it to the neighboring countries, the neighboring stands, because like people who go to Kazakhstan, they'll go to Uzbekistan, they'll expect the same kind of price range in Kyrgyzstan, but do not expect that because it is different. A couple of points that I forgot to add to this video earlier when I was filming, even though Kyrgyzstan is an officially Muslim country, they, you will not find the hand shower in any of the bathrooms, in any of the hotels, any accommodation. So if that's really important to you, then please carry a portable travel bidet i will leave a link to that you get that very easily on amazon you can carry that with you but you will not find a hand shower anywhere in any accommodation in kyrgyzstan now this is the very important part i do not expect this because i thought kyrgyzstan is a little more developed country in terms of payments and stuff like that but turns out i was wrong visa cards were not working here my husband has a visa card i have a mastercard i have a debit card which 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 worked in some places and didn't work in some places. It was very weird. The, the moment I landed, I went to a supermarket to buy some water. My debit card didn't work there. What I'm trying to say is don't count on your cards. Carry cash, carry sufficient cash. I think that is everything. I know this is longer than a normal vlog that you're used to, but I had to fit in all the information that I gathered on my trip in Kyrgyzstan. This is all my experience, my opinion. 
So if there is more that you have learned when you visited this country, please feel free to leave your comments in the comment section below. If you like this vlog, you know what to do. Give me a big fat thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Hit that bell icon so that you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Next week, we'll be starting the entire series of Kyrgyzstan. Stay tuned for that. I'll see you guys next week. Until then, take care. Bye, guys. Cheers. <laughs> Let's power through. Uh, what's the next one? Damn it, I forgot. Transportation. The snow is increasing, isn't it? Oh, okay. I'm frozen now. It's really, really cold. <laughs> I think I have to get my jacket. Okay, now that I have gloves on. Okay, let's talk again.